Women make up about half of the population, but underrepresented in elective office. For the next few minutes, we'll discuss the obstacles that contribute to women in politics. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Joining me is Helen Holton. She's a member of the Board of Directors at the National Foundation for Women Legislators. Helen, welcome to the program. Thank you, Robert. Glad to be here. It's good to see you, as always. You know, here's what we know. As I mentioned a few moments ago, women make up about half of the population when it comes to any major household decision, mm -hmm. whether it's where the kids go to school, whether it's where the kids will live, whether it's uh, the big household item, women always typically make the decision based on the studies. What we also know is that women typically decide who our next president is going to be, just in terms of the voting patterns over the last 15 or 20 years. But when you take a look at the numbers in terms of women being in elected office, that number is much, much lower. Mm -hmm. Why is that the case? That's an interesting question that you asked. Why is that the case? And it's probably one of those things we'll never know the answer to. But one of the things that's helping to change that trajectory is empowering women. When you think of the traditional roles of women as mothers, housewives, teachers, uh, it's always been under the... Caregiving role? Caregiving role, follow the man, the man will lead, things of that nature. But what you will find is that women in leadership roles bring a very different dynamic that tends to be a little more balanced, uh, more compassionate, and doing a little more research. Not that men don't research, but women tend to get down to a level that says, who will this impact? And what will the long-term effect be? And how does it impact families, community, and the quality of life? You know, Helen, it's interesting. I remember hearing a speech uh, Senator Barbara Mikulski, Democrat from Maryland, mm -hmm. said many years ago, she said, women really don't get involved in politics because they're involved in real issues. They don't have time to run for office. They're busy, you know, making sure there's food on the table. They're busy just making sure that life is just working, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a very interesting uh, statement to make for someone who recently announced her retirement. She's going to be retiring uh, in 2016. And I think by most accounts, hopefully you'll agree with this, Senator Mikulski has been a powerhouse, not just for Marylanders, but for all women uh, across the country in terms of nurturing women and, and, and encouraging them running for office. Uh, Secretary Clinton is mm -hmm. on record as saying uh, that Barbara Mikulski is, uh, is and was a mentor of hers. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the Mikulski effect on women running for office. Well, it's real easy for me to do that. Barbara Mikulski is a woman who encouraged me ah. to run for public office in that from Baltimore, you know, her, she started not as a woman saying, I want to run for office. She started as a social worker. You know, there was an issue about a major highway, 90, uh, I-70, coming through her community. And what she did was she organized and mobilized her neighbors to say, no, we don't want this in our community. From that, she was elected to the Baltimore City Council, where I currently serve on the Baltimore City Council. And for women, it's the best entry point for women tends to be at the local level. Sure. But once they get a taste of it and get comfortable with it and understand that they're able to do more for community, more to impact the quality of life, they then look at the state house or the federal government. You know, what's interesting, you mentioned Baltimore. My understanding is Baltimore has always been, or at least recently been, at the forefront in terms of women representation uh, in elective office. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Uh, for a while there, Maryland was the number one state with the most amount of women in the state legislature. Do you think that made a difference in terms of legislating? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that we were able to close the gap on issues around domestic violence, mm -hmm. issues around health and health care, issues around uh, education and childhood development, issues around violence. And so when you look at what it means to have these issues taken on, they benefit the whole of society. Sure. They support business, economic development, they support higher ed, they support primary education, all the things that make for a sound, progressive society. It's going to be really interesting to see uh, come this time next year whether or not a woman is going to be at the top of the ticket in terms of the Democratic side. Obviously, everyone is taking a look at Secretary Clinton and seeing if, in fact, she is going to go all the way uh, towards the Democratic nomination. Helen Halton, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Keep up the great work in women's issues and all issues in general. Thank you very much, Robert, for having me. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.